So I'm not crazy.
Good afternoon. My name is Katie George, and I serve as a sideline reporter and host at ESPN covering college football. And I'm so excited to be here with you this afternoon as we are officially 53 days away from the College Football Playoff National Championship kicking off just down the street at Lucas Oil Stadium on Monday, January 10th. And while the national championship will certainly be the big event of the weekend, the CFP and the host committee here in Indianapolis have been working tirelessly for almost two years to create an incredible weekend of activities, from concerts featuring A-list performers to converting the Indiana Convention Center into a 300,000 square foot college football theme park to celebrating teachers nationwide. January 8th through the 10th is going to be unforgettable. And the best part about it is you don't even need a ticket to the national championship to make lasting memories here in Indianapolis for what will be the first ever college football national championship here in this great city. And I know everybody wants to know who the A-list performers are going to be, but before we get into that and before we get into the football side of things, we'd like to share one of the priorities of the CFP, and that is making a positive impact on its host community, one that will last for years well beyond the football game being played Enter the College Football Playoff Foundation. The pandemic has certainly underscored the incredible things that teachers do to educate our children. Now more than ever, teachers are needed, and the College Football Playoff Foundation's sole mission is to celebrate and support teachers nationwide. Take a look. We want all teachers to know how grateful we are for your dedication this past year and every year. Indiana teachers will have the opportunity to participate in events and receive a number of perks and giveaways. A free micro learning professional development platform. We're proud to make Teach Indy and the Indiana eLearning Lab our legacy projects. Long term mission is to reward and recognize and honor teachers. Great teachers change lives. To discuss the impact of the College Football Playoff Foundation at length, please help me welcome to the stage Executive Director of the College Football Foundation, Britton Bonofsky, as well as President of the 2022 Indianapolis Host Committee, Susan Boffman. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks, of course. Now, Britton, I know that we are turning the final curve here in terms of this event being hosted in just a matter of weeks. Can you take us back to the very beginning and how this was all created in terms of the college football playoff foundation as well as extra yard for teachers? Sure. Well, when the CFP was born on the backside of the BCS, and no one really liked the BCS very much, but everyone loved the, the college football <laughs> playoff, uh, we talked about it and decided to um, embed a community investment element. You know, the game was going to go from site to site, and it just made sense that as it moves that we do something really special in those communities. And we were around the table, Bill Hancock and some other commissioners, and we talked about what meant a lot to us, what was important, and we all had a teacher that made a difference in our lives, and so we said, let's just go all in for teachers. So our mission is, as you said, is to support teachers. Uh, we have four pillars. Uh, we use the platform to recognize them because generally they're under-recognized in our communities. Um, we provide resources much needed in the classrooms. We end up doing a lot of professional development support. We're doing a lot of that here in Indianapolis. And then um, also uh, we use our platform to recruit and retain teachers in our communities. And so I've got to say, Susan, you and, and Mark and, and Claire and Murray and the whole team have done such a brilliant job of pulling together a legacy impact strategy that we're just proud to be a part of. And we've, it's statewide, which is the first time we've done something mm -hmm. statewide. So we're, we're very proud of that. It's hitting all four of our pillars. So we're just thrilled to, to be here. That's wonderful. And, and Susan, for you, when you first met with Britton and his team and you learned about the extra yard for teachers and how it would possibly be implemented here in Indianapolis, what were your initial thoughts? Well, we were amazingly excited. We're like, what could be better than helping teachers, right? So in this community, there's a long legacy of helping youth. And when you think about it, what is better to help youth than to help the teachers who are helping them? And we know and believe and embrace that great teachers do change lives. So it's been a really perfect fit for us, and we're really honored to be a part of it. And how has the initiative affected educators in Indianapolis and beyond so far? Well, it's been wonderful because we have been able to do statewide initiatives as well as central Indiana and Marion County. Uh, we've had great participation and we've be, been able to do a lot of things from the rewards component that Britton talks about to providing a digital learning lab, doing job fairs, 
um, creating recognition programs for teachers and hopefully inspiring other people to want to become teachers in the future. Yeah, absolutely. We could definitely use some more teachers. I know that for a fact. Um, the Indy Impact Strategy includes a focus of retention of teachers, as you both just mentioned, through the provision of resources and recognition of great teachers. So we're pleased to be joined by a teacher who's been impacted by the foundation's work here in Indianapolis. There's no better way to tell the story, so please help us in welcoming K-8 through computer science teacher at Cinch Charter School, Melissa McCullen. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you? Good to see you. Melissa, thank you so much for being here. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. We're happy to hear your story. So as a computer science teacher, how have you been using the learning lab so far in your classroom? So last year, like so many educators, I found myself not only teaching a new subject in a new school, but in a way we've never had to teach before. So when Indiana Learning Lab was brought to us through some professional development, it was a lifesaver for me. Um, I've been able to find new ways to teach, great lesson plans. Um, I've made some connections with other educators so that we can share ideas and collaborate and then I can expand my own knowledge and continue my own professional development. I so. bet there was a lot of collaboration going on as you guys navigated the unknown, having yeah. to both teach in the classroom as well as virtually. So I commend right. you as right. well as your coworkers for doing Thank so you. in what has been a, a very interesting year to say the least. Britton, how did you guys come up with the host committee, uh, the idea of the learning lab? Um, so I, I give most of the credit to the people here, but it was a really tough time, as you mentioned, during the pandemic for teachers, and we were just amazed by the, um, the level of commitment that teachers had all across the country. We were actually headed down a different path, and then some of the leadership here, in particular Claire Fitty and Green, I think, said, you know what, let's, let's change paths. Teachers need a digital platform. Um, we're thinking about pulling one together. We can find some funding. So we kind of channeled a, a big portion of our, our investment into the startup of the, the Learning Lab. And, and the great news about it, we have April here too, April Harper, who runs the Learning Lab. Um, the great thing about it is uh, in just a short amount of time, about two years, um, we've grown the user base to um, a, a, a basically a third of the teachers in the state of Indiana. So oh. 22,000 teachers are going to be using this platform uh, between the, now and the next six months. And, and so we're really pleased with that. And then the, the state Department of Education has agreed to take it over after that. Wow. So, so it's really a great story, and we're just proud to be part of it. That's kind of that lasting impact that we're talking about that goes well beyond the game just being played in a host city like this. That's incredible. And Susan, have you seen great engagement so far from the Learning Lab? Yeah, we've been really impressed and pleased to see that the number of registrations have picked up that quickly. And then I think the idea that at-home uh, helpers for learning can also join in. You can be a teacher or you can be someone who's helping a student learn. Uh, so there's something there for everyone. And we really see that being pivotal to go on in the future. Um, I think it's key with our partnerships with the state and with the city to be able to keep this growing. Well, we appreciate your time, Melissa. Thank you so Thank much. You. We've got a fourth grader here from Victory College Prep, Amir Thompson, that we would like to invite up to the stage. So, Britton, you had mentioned classroom makeovers earlier, and I believe Amir's classroom just got a makeover. Exactly what it, does that entail? So we started this a long time ago, and we've done about 60 of these, but we go into a school in partnership with the host committee oftentimes, and we find an old library that's tired and it doesn't have technology, and we reinvent it. We re remake the space so it, it's innovative and it's a really great environment um, from which to learn. And it was my pleasure to be at Victory Prep a few weeks back, and it was my pleasure to meet my friend Amir here. Amir, what did you think of the makeover of the Media Center at your school? I think that the makeover in the Media Center in our school was just so great because that shows that people at this college football playoff just really care about our students and our teachers to give us new resources. What does it look like in there? It's just very just like beautiful. <laughs> Is it missing anything? We're all about bettering ourselves here at the college football playoff. Mm, I, I can't think of anything. That's so Britain has something. knocked it out of the park. So yeah, it's, it's just perfect. It's beautiful. Are What's you a your good, favorite thing? In yeah. 
my favorite thing in there is all of the books because it gives the students and the teachers a new angle of learning and teaching and getting to know new subjects. You're old school. I love that. <laughs> Stick with that. We appreciate you being here. Do you have two teachers here as well? Yes, Mr. Sherman and Ms. Wills. Oh, I'd could like you to please shout them stand? Out. Thank you for being here. You've got a good student and a mirror. I think we can all agree on that. I would, like to sh I would like to shout them out because they've been just been such a great help throughout this journey of mine. I just, it's just, thank you guys. Oh, that's so. I love it. And, and Susan, can you just kind of add on the fact that this work will continue well after a championship trophy is hoisted here in Indianapolis? Yeah, I think that's one of the things we're really excited about. We go into the schools, we see the impact, we've really enjoyed seeing how that's working. And I think that our ability to work with organizations within the city, the state, the Mind Trust, which is a great nonprofit here, um, we hope to continue this long after the January 10th game, and we're really proud to do that. We should be, and we're proud of you, and we appreciate everything that you guys have done for the city of Indianapolis as well as the state. It's been amazing. So thank you for your time, Susan Britton, Amir, as well as thank Melissa. You. We appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. We now like to welcome two guests who have been fairly busy over the last few weeks here. Executive Director of the CFP, Bill Hancock, as well as Chair of the 2022 Indianapolis Host Committee, Mark Howell. excited to be here. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Katie. Thank you for being here. Of course. Of course. I know that there's so many factors that go into choosing a host city for the CFP. When you look at Indianapolis and its long history of hosting various events, as well as a beautiful venue in Lucas Oil Stadium, what was it about Indianapolis that made it a beloved host for such a great event? We decided we wanted to bring the championship game north. Okay. And Indianapolis was the obvious place. Uh, it checks all the boxes. Great facilities, uh, great volunteer base, great people. They know how to do big events. And uh, we, we've just been delighted with everything so far, thanks to Mark and Susan and all their colleagues. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, how does this event differ from others that you guys have hosted in the past? Yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate to live in a city that's known for hosting great championships, mm -hmm. but this is, uh, first, bringing a college football championship here, and we understand how different it is, the fact that we could be in a northern city, we're the first non-bowl city to host that. But looking back on our experiences with the NCAA championships, with motorsports, with the Super Bowl, we can draw on all of our experiences and expertise from those events, and then with a really innovative host committee and a lot of new ideas, create things that are, that are super special. Um, you know, one, one thing that I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse in, you know, we've got some really unique wow factors intended uh, with lighting. And we're going to do a lot of special things uh, at night. And so we're going to do things that people all over the city are going to be talking about the next morning that you're not going to want to miss. So we've got special things planned. Very exciting. Katie, I'll, I'll say this. I had uh, Indianapolis has hosted eight men's Final Fours. Mm -hmm. And I've been to all eight of them. Have you really? Yeah, and uh, everyone's been memorable, and that's what it's going to be like with CFP as well. Absolutely. Was the roof a factor at all? Well, the roof helps. Thank you for putting the roof on, Mark. <laughs> I figured I, it I think I, I think our chances of being selected as a host city would have been much smaller had there sure. not been a roof on Yes, Lucas it would have been mighty cold. And the unknown factor is, the unknown thing is that in the bid, Mark signed for this that the high temperature will be 60 degrees on game day. Okay, you can confirm. I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> That's good. Well, Tuesday night, the college football playoff committee released its third set of rankings. We're going to throw them up for you. Not a whole lot of movement, Bill, this week in the rankings. You still got Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, Ohio State in the top four. Cincinnati, as well as Michigan, are on the outside looking in. Week two had some fits, obviously, because you guys put Michigan ahead of Michigan State, which ruffled some feathers within my company at ESPN, but I think the committee has done a really nice job through the first three weeks. You know, what have you thought of the job that they've done, and 
What's impressed you about the product that's been on the field so far this season? Well, it's been a great season. First of all, how cool is it to have college football back, mm -hmm. fans back? This time last year, we were just getting ready to have our first ranking because the season had just mm -hmm. begun. So it's great to be more back to normal. The committee, these are 13 uh, intelligent, high-integrity uh, high football experts, and they start all over every week. Uh, which means that they don't pay attention to what rankings they had people last week. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a clean sheet every week, and they rank them as they see them. Um, they watch anywhere from 10 to 20 games each weekend Whoa. themselves. I hate to tell you this, but they have a deal where they can watch games, cut down versions of games. Could and I get your, a couple of those cut down? <laughs> your, your company's not going to like this because they cut out the sideline reporter commentary. Yeah. So, sorry about that. It's all my hard work. Nobody yep. cares. And they, but they can, the cut out, they can cut out commercials, cut out time between periods, and watch a game in 40 minutes. Well, if they're watching 10 to 20 a week, I hope it would be cut down. You've got seven new committee members. How have they done throwing themselves into what is a really hard job in narrowing it down to just four teams? The seven new members have been great. We told them they're not going to be freshmen for long. Okay. They're, they're, the first week they were redshirt freshmen, and now they're sophomores. Uh, we meet with them three times during the off season to get them prepared. Uh, but, but they're football experts, and they've been following the game for a long time. It's, it's a great honor to be on this committee. It's one of the most prestigious committees in all of college athletics, and we're honored to be able to work with them. Yeah. Mark, I know it doesn't matter which two teams end up in Indianapolis. You're going to be excited about hosting them no matter what. What are you most looking forward to in hosting two great teams? Well, it, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I trust the selection committee <laughs> completely. As a Notre Dame grad, if they bias towards Notre Dame, I wouldn't be disappointed sure. in that. But uh, There's an outside but, chance. But we, we, we're super excited, you know, for the student athletes, for their families, for the fans that are going to come here. We're going to show them a spectacular three days of a football festival, a championship campus. And from Indianapolis's perspective, whatever those schools are, they're going to each send tens of thousands of people into our city. And we can't wait to show off our city, demonstrate our Hoosier mm -hmm. hospitality. And when they leave here, talk about what a tremendous experience they had while they were here. Yeah, they're going to make so many memories through January 8th through 10th. And I know I'm very excited. And, and there's plenty to do and see. So I'd like to kind of walk through the many different events uh, that, that fans and citizens of Indianapolis will get to experience during that weekend. And if you're wondering, what is the Playoff Fan Central? Well, it's a free three-day family-friendly event at the Indiana Convention Center featuring games, youth sports clinics, pep rallies, and exhibits celebrating college football and its history. And so, Bill, what can fans expect when they walk into Playoff Fan Central? Fun, energy, <laughs> focus on college football. P people here have been to the NCAA Fan Festival. They went to the Super Bowl Fan yeah. Festival. Uh, this is the same and yet a strong focus on college football. It's, it's, it's a blast. I, I love going to it myself. Yeah, it's got a great energy, and I love seeing all the different kids throwing the football around. Some tackling here and there, but it's a physical game. We appreciate yeah, that. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool event. So I would, I would tell folks, come downtown and enjoy it. Enjoy yourself. Definitely. Walk around. Soak it all in. Two other events that you can partake in is the Extra Yard 5K and the Taste of the Championship, both supporting the College Football Playoff Foundation's Extra Yard for Teachers platform. So the Sunday prior to the National Championship is always a great day because you start with a nice brisk run to work out all the calories. If you're like me, it would be a leisure walk. And then you don't feel so bad when you head to the Taste of the Championship that evening. I would like to know, Mark, what we need to do to entice you to get up early and run in the 5K to support the foundation. Well, I, one of the really cool benefits of being the host committee chair is that I've gotten to go to the previous college football championships. Mm -hmm. And no matter what city we were in, we did run the 5K, and it was truly one of the highlights, seeing the town from that perspective, seeing the teachers out there. And, you know, talk about creating these memories. When, when you run through the French Quarter in New Orleans at 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning, you can create lifetime memories from that sure. experience. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So, no, we, we really do encourage people to come out. We, we think we're going to have uh, room for about 1,200 runners. We anticipate wow. that it will sell out. We've got an awesome course laid out. There's going to be a lot of fun surprises uh, for the runners. Uh, and, and also, you know, I'll proudly say I think we've got the best swag ever okay. uh, for the runners and walkers. So it's worth uh, 
thir 30 minutes of exertion to collect all the goods. And pretty unique for runners who come here from out of town to be able to start and finish indoors. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, if running's not your thing, though, and eating is, like me, the Taste of the Championship is a premium dining experience and fundraising event offering local residents and national championship game attendees the opportunity to indulge in gourmet food and drink prepared by local chefs here in Indianapolis. And tickets are already on sale now, so you might want to lock that in. But Mark, is there a specific chef that we should be on the lookout for when we attend the Taste of Championship? I'm not going to narrow it down to one. I'll tell you Smart. at 9 p. or I'll tell you at 9 p.m. <laughs> on January 9th, which one was the best. Okay. But, but again, like the 5K, having been to previous college football playoff championships, the taste truly is one of the most fun events. Celebrating teachers, raising money uh, for for a good cause, and and one thing that has historically been a well-kept secret that's less of a secret now is Indianapolis is a foodie town. So Food & Wine Magazine just listed Indianapolis as one of America's favorite food oh, cities. Wow. So we're going to have 25 restaurants and chefs, each with their own specialty. So there'll be, there'll be something for everybody. That's awesome. You can find out more about both the 5K and the Taste on the CFP website right now. And as I mentioned, tickets are already on sale for both. And we'd also like to remind you that there is an extra Yard for Teachers Summit powered by Get Your Teach On. Registration starts today. This is an incredible part of the weekend, so let's talk a little bit more about it and what educators that attend this free event can expect. So the foundation celebrates thousands of teachers from all over the country all year long, and this culminates with the foundation hosting the National Teachers of the Year at the National Championship Game. Is that right? Yeah, and being, being around those teachers is a highlight of the weekend for me. You can just feel their sincerity and how thrilled they are, and they're kind of goofy, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> And they will, they will, they're already looking forward to coming to Indianapolis. Okay, very cool. And that summit will be held on Saturday at the NCAA Hall of Champions. And then one of my favorite events, I haven't had a chance yet to attend it live and in person, but I always watch because it's broadcast on ESPN, is Media Day, which I think is one of the most exciting portions of the weekend. It's on that Saturday morning prior to the national championship. As a fan, you can walk around the room. You can listen to different players. You can get to hear from head coaches. They even give you a free radio so you can walk around and you can actually like listen in to each guy at the podium wherever you see fit. And there's always, Bill, such a great energy and buzz in that building just a day before we actually get to, two days before we actually get to see the players on the field. It, it's a unique opportunity to, to sort of be up close and personal you're not going to be able to shake hands with the players, but you will be in the stands with your radio listening to all the interviews. Yeah. And there's some great give and take between the, the sports writers who are all funny and, and smart and a little bit on the edgy side <laughs> and the players who are all funny and smart and a little bit on the edgy side. So Media Day is a real highlight of the weekend. Okay. And one of your other favorite things about the weekend is music, correct? Okay. Well, I want you to tell us a little bit about the AT&T Playoff Playlist Live and the Capital One stage at All State Championship tailgate. And this is all happening at Monument Circle. How much is it going to cost the lovely people in this room? How about zero? We love that. Yep. We love free. <laughs> the, the concert series, I, we're going to unveil the, the talent for the concert series in just a few minutes. I don't know what's more anticipated, the four teams or the talent for the concert probably, series? Probably, yeah. probably the talent for the yeah. uh, Monument Circle. But, but it, it's, it's a great event, and you'll see we, we have A-list talent here. And, uh, and having it at Monument Circle um, will, will be tremendous. We're, we're going to embrace whatever weather there is, and uh, it's, it's, it's just going to be a, a great series of, of concerts. Did you finally get the Beatles to agree to come over to do it? <laughs> well, I, I have a debate with my staff, our staff, many of whom are here, because I keep telling them that I want the Beatles for the act. And one of them said to me, Bill, that is so yesterday. And I said, but I saw them standing there. Okay. How's that? The staff is going like this. So we can just be sure that the Beatles will not be revealed on the big screen in a moment when we get to the musicians. Maybe next year. We Maybe can think about year. that. Maybe yeah. next year. Mark, Bill, I appreciate the time. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, Bill already alluded to it. We're going to reveal the musical acts. Each year, AT&T Playoff Playlist Live in the Capital One stage at All State Championship Tailgates brings together the biggest names in music to create the perfect soundtrack 
for the national championship. All of these performers will play on one massive stage that will be constructed right in Monument Circle, and all of the performances, as we said, will be free. The wait is over. The college football playoff is bringing the heat to downtown Indy this January. The 2022 National Championship Weekend will light up historic Monument Circle with an epic free concert series. Join us Saturday and Sunday for AT&T Playoff Playlist Live. Featuring winner of the 2021 Billboard Music Awards top rock song, AJR. Here we go. People's Choice Award nominated new artist of the year, Ava Max. Multi platinum global superstar, Doja Cat. Grammy Award winner, 21 Pilots. And on game day, come huddle up before the game at the Capital One stage and All-State Championship tailgate in Monument Circle. Featuring platinum selling newcomer, Breland. An ACM award winner and chart topping multi platinum artist, Sam Hunt. Come help us count down the kickoff at the College Football Playoff National Championship Weekend in Indianapolis. I'm personally a huge Doja Cat fan as well as a Sam Hun fan, so I will be so excited to be in Monument Circle come January 8th, 9th, and 10th, leading up to the National Championship. We appreciate all of you guys for being here today. We're gonna have a reception outside of the ballroom. We would love for you guys to join us and be sure to follow the CFP on all social media platforms for the latest updates. And if you wanna throw in some uh, mean tweets to Bill based on what his committee decides each week as they go through their rankings. Thank you guys for being here, we appreciate it. Had to get her number. Like six weeks. Now me and her go way back. Like Cadillac seats. Body like a bear.